But what is going on guys, it's Toby here, and since I decided to separate out the Epcot vlog with my mom and the Fuel Hat vlog, I had to refill my intro. So I hope everyone's having a fantastic day, and essentially we're going to be installing a Fuel Hat on Sally. Well, I technically already did it, but enjoy. Isn't that right, Sophia? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whenever I say it's going to take like two hours, it takes me like four, so let's hope that does not happen today. Sophia's going to go ahead and cold start the car up here so you can get a feeling of how loud it is, because I have a feeling it's going to be super loud and we're a good distance away at the top of her apartment here she goes make sure to put it in neutral <laughs> Everybody looked kind of embarrassing, but we're gonna warm her up and then we're gonna move her to the back so we can work on the car. I just got a ton of dirty looks, like everyone in the Market Street, cause like that's the name of that restaurant over there, is like not happy with the car. So I don't know, I think I might need to get a resonator cause people are getting really upset, but I am also getting the new Camaro, which is a 2022 LT1 and it is not gonna be nowhere near as loud as this. So we're gonna put the race car in the garage for a little bit because it's not been practical to daily drive at all. It's just a pain in the butt. But once again, Camaro delivery date is on March 18th. Like I'm super excited. We're going full bolt on, running 10s, NA with minimal mods, just like a ported MSD intake, ported throttle body and E85. It's gonna be crazy. All right, so we're almost close to the official working spot on the car right by the dumpster. So this is where this car belongs, right by the dumpster, right Right there but that's where we're gonna park it up and then get started on doing the work oh there's Sophia's scat bag it's looking nice she wants to do a wrap on it actually this car is disgusting but this is the new fuel hat that we're putting in so it's a DW 400 and it's supposed to help a lot with the fuel flow and probably take away some of my issues here because I am getting tuned on lunge so this will help out with the car and how it runs Sophia was kind enough to help me out here but we have almost all of the trunk unloaded oh that's Liram's old license oh, plate <laughs> from the Porsche and we just take everything out and we should be able to get to the fuel center or like I don't even know what to call it the fuel tank right underneath the back seats the black one but while we're at it we're gonna try and see if I can fix the active exhaust because this hasn't been working since the accident and I tried to fix it in the last video but hopefully I can try and fix it too while I fix the fuel hat so unfortunately I couldn't figure out where this plugged in but these two is pretty simple and self-explanatory it goes into each of your mufflers and now I have the tire back here so we can remove the back seat, the back seat. Yeah, it's really simple. There's like two clips, but all you need to do to remove the back seat is obviously put that forward. We need to push this up. Oh God. The back seat clip is literally just right under here. So you just click it and then this should come up like that. Next step is to unplug the fuel pump. So it's like a pretty stubborn clip, but you get it right on top and you push down and it should come off. And now I need to turn on the car and basically let it run out of fuel. <laughs> This is my special fuel hat removing tool and I'm going to put the impact gun on this side and basically break off the fuel hat. The big shout out to Jags for the impact gun. This is what we're going to use to get the job done with the fuel hat. So you put it on the lid and you break it off. Oops, sorry, I did not mean to knock that over. Sorry. <laughs> So what you need to do next is take off this fuel hat cover. It's just a black little cover like that, and that's your OEM fuel hat. So unfortunately, I couldn't record it, but when I unplugged one of the hoses, a bunch of fuel shot out. So Sophia evacuated the area <laughs> because it was a lot of fuel. Got the fuel hat tool in there that I was showing earlier. Let's see if it breaks it off. I know this impact gun is really low on the battery. Oh wait, I think it did break it off. Oh, let's see. Yeah, it did. Obviously, using the impact gun to break it off is a much better alternative than using a breaker bar because it's super sketchy with all that leverage, but as you can see, it's broken off. So what I'm going to do now is just lift up this fuel hat very slowly. I need to make sure that I don't kink the hose on the bottom, and it should be pretty simple. So what you need to do with this fuel hat is slowly finesse it out, like twist it, because if you bend one of like the, I don't even know what it's called, I forgot. But if you bend it, you can actually mess up the detection of how much fuel is in your tank. And take, for example, your car will say there's half a tank when really there's a full tank or the opposite. So this is a floater that goes in there and basically detects how much fuel is in your tank. So that tells you 
if the car is almost empty or if it's full. That's pretty cool. So we almost have the full thing out. You really have to finesse it carefully and get it out really slowly. And then there should be two tabs just like we did earlier, but they're kind of a pain in the butt to figure out. So these are the two tabs, like it's the yellow thing right there. And then the fuel hat should be out. Big All right. Hand. All right, Sophia, thank you. But this is the last one right here. And now we're ready for the new fuel hat. But we have the OEM, which one's the OEM? The cleaner looking one, yeah, actually. So the Wait, OEM yes. one is on the right, <laughs> yeah. right? And then we have the left one. Now we're transferring over this floating thing that measures how much fuel is in there, and then we should be good to go. You got it. Um, maybe. If not, I'll grab it, I'll help you out. No, Put the camera down. Side. It goes on this side. And stop look. recording. Yeah, you got look, it? it goes on this side. I was wondering where the purple wires went. It goes over here. But Sophia's got it all figured out. I think she's clipping it in. Is it going in? Yeah, it's in. All right, and then I'm not gonna secure it to the back until, wait, but wasn't that on the back? Yeah, I'm about back to go side. put that in with it. Okay. So in goes the new WD-40. I think that's what it's called. No, WD-40 is like a spray. <laughs> DW-400, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Flip this bad boy in and then I can just drop it on in. It's not focusing for sh all right, so last couple of steps here. Sophia's fed up with me again. Clipping this back in, then this one. I need this thing for it, the red clip, and we should be good to go. So this again. We had a moment, and he was supposed to put that on first before he put the plugs in. So we're unplugging them, and then we're putting that on and plugging them again. If you guys didn't know, Toby's not very good with the clips, so I've yeah. been helping him out. <laughs> so right now, we're putting back on like the cover, and you just take the oh, breaker bar, and you tighten it with the tool again. So I think that's about tight. It's not going anywhere. Sophia just uh, took something out of her secret storage for car parts and we're gonna put that clip back in. We're just about done here. So we already put that clip in and you got that one, baby? Yes, I do. And we're set. No, it's good. Okay. Everything's good. Just double check on all the harnesses. Yep, I think we're set. How does and this close or is it just? It just pushes down. Ah! Okay, I think I got it. Absolute last thing we're gonna do is bypass the bozo pump or my booster pump and go straight to the plug-in. So you take that, that one you just unplugged, and that one goes right there into the connector. Okay. And then this is the booster pump. We no longer need this. So I'm gonna be selling this. This is going live on Facebook Marketplace. Hit me up, don't lowball me. Used, but in good condition. So we just assembled the back seats again. Super simple, you just push it far back. Make sure to pull through on your seat belt so it comes right through and then it just clips in. This is the moment of truth. Is the car gonna start up? It may take a few tries. Sophia, hit it. Wait, do you have the keys? Yeah, you do. Yeah? Overall, that wasn't a really bad install. I do recommend that you have somebody else with you because it's kind of hard to hold the fuel hat and unplug stuff while you're pulling it out. So definitely have somebody else with you. I was fortunate enough to have Sophia and she helped me out this time. Oh, there's still a ton of gasoline in there. I poured all of it out. <laughs> Look how much, Jesus. This whole box is like dripping. We'll just leave it outside for now, outside of your apartment, and then we'll let all the gas evaporate. Okay. But we'll get another box for it, and I'll keep it just in case I need it. I'm putting everything back in the car, but look how bald these Mickey Thompsons are after, I don't know, 4,000 miles? <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> I daily drove them though, so I just think the beadlocks look so much better than the stock wheels. I'm racing Parker this Saturday, so I have my backup GT350 half shafts, and I need to get on a new tune before that happens. I'm still waiting on my engine mount brackets from Ford. So we're just going to Chick-fil-A now, this last stop of the day. Are you recording? No. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> I heard the beep. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty boys, so as you guys probably know, I decided to separate out both the Epcot vlog and the Fuel Hat vlog. So what we're gonna do now is go to a car meet. It's actually Fortnite at Ace Cafe in Orlando. It should be pretty fun. So we're gonna see a bunch of Mustangs, possibly a Ford GT. Let's keep our fingers crossed for one of those. And basically this is gonna be the second half of the Fuel Hat vlog. So Sophia's actually coming too, but she's a little bit ahead right now. Let's see, we only have like 20 miles left or 20 minutes so we're super close it's not that bad but max couldn't bring his camaro or his 2ss because his trans is having major issues now hopefully i don't have the same issues because i'm getting a 10 speed but his clutch packs are burning up and he needs a new trans chevy is going to warranty it out so it's not that big of a deal but it honestly kind of sucks because he can't drive his car right
right now. Really nice C7 that I saw along the way. So I think that's a Stingray or something like that. I'm not entirely sure because I don't know my Corvettes that well, but it looks pretty nice. I mean, I would get a C7 Stingray. I wouldn't like mod it up like crazy, do a cam, possibly do like a Magnuson supercharger, but I'm not really familiar with the platform. That's something that I want to look more into. Totally forgot to mention, but I do have some good news. So I just got the mail notification from the mail room at the apartment that my new carbon fiber fenders have come for Sally's. So by the time you see the next vlog, they're most likely going to be up there. Now, I also wanted to remind everyone that I am racing Stangry this Friday. Actually, no, Saturday. Friday is the preparation day. This Saturday, March 5th at the South Georgia Motorsports Park. So it's going to be super fun. I don't know what the outcome is going to be. I feel like he's going to have me, but you guys are going to have to stay tuned to see what happens in the next vlog. So Orlando always has terrible traffic, but today is like something different. I just got out of like bumper to bumper traffic for 20 straight minutes. And I think Sophia is so far ahead of me that like I'm going to show up a whole 30 minutes later than she does. So this is nuts with all this Orlando traffic. There's actually so many nice cars in Orlando. This is like the second one that I've seen that's super cool on the way. I think that's a GT350 blacked out. I don't think that's my friend though, because he has a different plate than that, but that thing looks sexy. I'm gonna try and catch up to him so you guys can get some rollers on this GT350. Honestly, I think I might need to do a GT350 build in the future. Oh, there he goes. He's zooming, boys. Oh my God. I think we're about five minutes away now. No, four minutes and I get to get off on this exit, but seeing the city is always pretty cool because where I'm from, we don't have big buildings like that. So it's pretty cool. It gives me a different perspective and this car meet should be pretty fun. We're almost there now. Actually, you know what? It would have been cool to cruise out with the boys here, but I haven't been to downtown Orlando in like the fattest minute. Like I used to go to the Orlando Magic Games out here and this is like pretty nostalgic. So this is cool. All right, I'm gonna show you guys how loud Sally is in the city here because everything reverberates like crazy off of these walls. So she's like three times louder at 2000 RPM. It's gonna be crazy. We're just gonna wait for this light to turn green. This is exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> 3000 RPMs, like literally nothing. And this is a huge meet. So I think it's Ace Cafe right here. I'm supposed to go in. And multitasking is kind of craziness, but we still have a good m amount of cars here. I think we're a little bit too late, but it still should be somewhat fun. Let's see what kind of cars we have here. And so here's what we have here. I got a 5.0 to the side of me, Mr. Max. Where's the Camaro, Max? It's back uh, on, the, on the shop in the lift. <laughs> Where's Chevy's belong? I think we're a little late because there's not that many cars left, huh? Just a bit. Yeah. Lights already came on and it was like, it was, it was com full conversion, so. Oh, really good. And then that splitter on there, that's yeah. uh... The bike red splitter. Oh, really? And, yeah, and uh, the rods are actually chassis mounted. Like, I actually had to fabricate the, the brackets to build to bolt it onto the chassis. What, onto the... Onto the... Uh, the bumper? Yeah. 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 So, basically, and it's... It also it's has this... The original anti it's not the original GT5, but we just washed it, but... Is it from, uh... Actually Anderson? bought it off for somebody that actually had it on his GT, um, GT, um, um, and he crashed the car, so he basically parted it. Parted it out. So it was, I, from what I understand, it was, um, it was like a plastic ABS wing. It's like, are those reps or are they real? Like, no. So they're uh, they're a flow forge from mm -hmm. SME, uh, but I think out the door with the wheels, um, I think I was at like 24. 24? So, it's yeah. not even that bad. Yeah, it wasn't that bad at all. Just the same ones that come from the factory, the 4S, right? Or just uh, the Pilot Sports? The Pilot Sports are different. These are the Super Sports. Uh, the, the 4S's are what come factory. Factory. The, uh, performance pack. And did you wrap the hood too? Hmm? And PPF on the sides. I see it. Yeah, so I got the PPF for the fenders, the bumper, the hood, and then the eight pillars. So who makes the splitter here on this? Uh, it's an MP Concept splitter. It looks really good. I didn't think they would be that bright, but I have aftermarket switchbacks on mine. And they look, that's just as bright. <laughs> and it's blacked out. That's yeah, dope. It's, wild, man. it's all the Alcantara and that stuff if you want to upgrade. So I did the seats myself. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the door panels are for GT Specials. I got them off a wreck car. Um, the e brake boot, center console, and the, uh, sh the shifter boot were from uh, American Muscle. Oh, really? Yeah, and then I can't remember the company I did to these. So I did these up here and then the kick panels down there. I can't remember the company I got those from. No, that's super clean. It definitely looks better than factory setup. That's really good. I think that's a Terminator right there. Might just be a Cobra. I don't know, that's sick. 
this, Mr. Max? <laughs> it is a lightning. Yeah, it's a lightning. Bro, I haven't been to a downtown Orlando in so long. Yeah, it's, yeah, a, it's lightning. a lightning. I could get one of those, bro. I should get one of those. Did you get it on video? Yeah, I got it on video. Look at this Slam 5.0, that thing looks sick. You know that guy on TikTok, Stangry? Parker, he has a Gen 2 with a... Yeah, he's got the uh, the big red blow-up valve, right? Yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> that's what everyone knows him for, the big red blow-up valve. But I'm racing him this Saturday, so that's yeah, why I'm going that. up there. And it should be fun. I hope my car works properly. All right, guys, I think we're out of here. We saw a couple cool new edges, saw some of those unique builds with the 5.0s, and it's pretty dead now. So I'm going to head out and go back to Gainesville now. Sophia, where are we going? gonna go get her some no. ice cream. <laughs> literally just got back to Gainesville. It was quite a long drive actually due to traffic, but I just realized that I didn't really take that many videos of the cars parked up. And I wanted to give you guys one more sneak peek before we end this vlog. So the carbon fiber fenders came, let's go to the mail room. I just need to grab the rest of my stuff, but I truly regret not taking any pictures or more videos of all the cars parked up at that Mustang meet. I mean, they all looked super good together. All right, so I suppose we're one step closer to seeing these Anderson Composites GT350R fenders. I'm super excited. Let's get the package room open. 497907. Oh, oops. One step closer. Let's go, boys. There we go. What the heck? So I'm not seeing them in here. I wonder where they are. I mean, it would be like a huge package because they are fenders and this whole room is completely empty. So I'm gonna have to ask management about that. Maybe they have it over there in their package room. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and email them up and say that I didn't get it. So that's really weird. I don't know why I did not get it in the package room, but we'll see what customer support says by tomorrow. So yeah, I'm gonna see what happens with that package. But if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.